in amongst the madness in the corner of the room. There's a machine. That's an interesting looking machine. I think it's time to see if we can find out if it works. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Yes, it's a machine. It's an old BBC master. It's in pretty tatty condition. I got it for a song on eBay and I just want to know, does it work? Clearly, there's capacitors in the power supply that need replacing and various other jobs that need doing. But let's just take a risk, plug it in and see what happens. Will the LEDs light and will it go beep? First things first, let's just have a quick look at this machine. I like the sound of the word machine. This is the power supply side of things here. And there's a little switch on here. Apparently it was tested. It was tested so long ago that the writing has faded off the tested sticker. Uh, and then we've got a UHF uh, output, composite video output, which is good, RGB, uh, analog joystick inputs, RS-423, cassette tape recorder, uh, audio out, which is nice, and Econet. Oh my goodness. Let's switch it on and see if it goes beep or see if it goes bang. Wow. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. I thought that was going to go bang. Um, but can you believe it? That sounded like it started up. The plan then is to plug it into this lovely little LCD monitor here, which has composite input on it. I've got half of the cables that I need. I need to dig through my box of connectors. So as we can see, composite video is BNC out here. I need to dig through my connectors here and see if I can find a BNC to phono. So far I found a PL259 to phono. Let's keep looking, but uh, there's, oh, 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 I think I just got one. Oh yes, there we go, happy days. BNC to phono. So that should plug into there, and then we can plug that in there. And then this can go in there. <laughs> All right, BBC connected to monitor. Let's do the reach around and turn it on. Everything seems to sort of work. I'm sort of used to it saying something like ready written on the screen with like a colon and a, and a little blinking cursor uh, because yeah, apparently typing on the keyboard does nothing. So just a little research says, if you hold down the F key and boot, then we get this and it says, this is not language, but now we can type on the keyboard. But yeah, this is not a language. Okay, uh, something's corrupt and it's not looking for one of the ROMs. So this is getting even more interesting. If you hold down the D button, uh, then it boots into a simple disk filing system as opposed to advanced disk filing system. And you can do things like look at what ROMs are in here. So uh, ROM F is a terminal ROM. Uh, we've got a view ROM the ADFS ROM, a basic ROM, an editing ROM, a view sheet. So this is like Word, Excel, um, the old disk filing system and a plot mate. So I wonder if it was actually used to drive some kind of A3 plotter in the past. You know, one of these devices that literally uses a pen and paper and XY coordinates, uh, pen up, pen down. Yeah, quite cool. All right, let's see how much further we can get with this. <laughs> okay, making more progress. And uh, apparently you can configure or effectively you can turn on or uh, start running different ROMs. And I, <laughs> I'm i trying to access uh, any other ROM and um, I'm sort of having a hard job. And, and the reason why I'm having such a hard job, if you look, uh, that's spelt configure. Um, weirdly, the I key, sadly, the I key is not working. How annoying. All right, well, we've got something to fix here then. But if you wiggle the I key in just the right way, there we go, then you can get, you can get eyes up on the screen. <laughs> so I've turned it over in order to access all of the screws to get this BBC Master apart. And <laughs> the thing that I've just noticed is this product contains a battery unit. Oh no. 
Uh, fingers crossed we haven't got a leaky battery, but I don't recall if the battery is just for the real-time clock or if it's um, to remember some stuff in CMOS, I can't recall. But yeah, uh, anyway, uh, some cool stuff here. We've got a tube port, a one meg burst, user port, printer port, disk drive port, auxiliary power port. There's loads of stuff on the BBC Master. Absolutely fabulous bit of old kit. Right, let's get the screwdriver out then. These things are quite easy to take apart, just four screws on the back. Uh, nothing connected to it, yep, okay. Oh, right, okay, so there is a battery in here. Uh, good news, it doesn't look like it's leaked. Can you Adam and Eve it? <laughs> Sorry, the battery is called Eve, I've no idea. But Eve is a 3.6 volt AA cell. This is a lithium 3.6 volt AA cell. It it was out of date in September 2017, but I'll tell you what we're going to do just for fun. Let's look at the voltage. It's still 3.25 volts. That is just unbelievable. Well done, Eve. And you didn't leak your juices everywhere. And then the keyboard comes out with three screws quite easily. A couple of connectors that need to be carefully disconnected. Okay, so first inspection is the keyboard PCB actually looks to be in good condition. In fact, uh, just sort of looking at the BBC itself, everything looks in a reasonably good sort of visual condition. It's not too dusty, it's not too dirty on the inside. It's uh, So we've got one, two, three, four ROM slots there. So I've no idea what ROMs they are. This has absolutely nothing written on it at all. Perhaps it's an amalgamation of various different ROMs. Perhaps you can put a few different ROMs on one ROM chip. So just for fun, I've taken both of the ROMs, well, effectively all of the ROMs out of the Beeb, uh, and this happens. Which is sort of, I suppose, expected. Doing a little bit of uh, research here, and there's a guy on Twitter called Break Into Program, um, and I think he's got his own website, breakintoprogram.co.uk. Uh, he's basically been through this already so um what's great to to see is he's he's also had the same problems and what it what it, ultimately what it is it's the cmos so the lithium battery had completely discharged and basically the cmos had lost its memory so it didn't know what it was doing and now what you can do is you can then with a, a few key sequences so a control d break and stuff like that uh, you can then get in there and you can type in some CMOS commands and you can just basically set it up um, for sort of standard functionality, if you like. Uh, and there's a, very, a load of other things that he's got in here as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Breaking the Program. Very useful because guess what? On the screen now, we have Acorn MOS with the DFS and Basic 10. Oh, my iKey still doesn't work. I've not fixed the iKey yet. I'm just too excited to play with this thing. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, thank you, Breaking a Program. Well done, well done. And also, <laughs> thank you to me, mate Lee, for a Brothers Toffee Apple English Cider. Right, let's get that away from the computer, Howard. Hello, peeps. Go to 10. Uh, yeah, ready with the run key. Here we go. Press the return button and let's see what happens. No such variable at line 10. So let's get into this keyboard. Just a case of popping these little connectors off here. And then, and then the whole keyboard assembly can be removed. So if we use a small screwdriver, I, I don't have proper keycap pullers, but you can carefully just remove the keycap from the key, exposing the little switch there. What I've decided to do, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these keys Oh my goodness, look at the amount of crap that's in here. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this actually. It's uh, it's only going to help sort of uh, elongate the life of this computer. Keycaps in the yellow bucket. And we'll give them a good old wash. Then let's go over this with a toothbrush. Oh my goodness. This is ugly. Oh, okay. Thankfully, it's just fluff. But either which way, this is horrible. Ugh. 
this is electrical contact cleaner so I'm just quickly going through all of these switches so having done all of that work on the key switches I just wanted to make sure that we have actually fixed the I key and uh, it looks as though yes indeed the I key is responding nicely everybody loves a good cleaning montage right <laughs> Righto folks, it looks like we've got a working keyboard. Let's get the cover back on. Cover needs a little bit of a clean as well, if I'm honest. There you go, 10, print. Uh, hello peeps. Space, semicolon means it will run. Boom, look at that. And <laughs> break into program. Happy days. There we go, folks. We have a working BBC master. Happy, happy days. I'm going to finish there because I've got other things to do as well as make YouTube videos. Uh, the good news is, is I have here an old floppy drive. This is proper old school and, and real floppies look how floppy these things are five and a quarter inch floppies and this is an old dual commoner disc drive here so we're going to see if we can connect that up to the bbc uh, in a future video and see if we can play some games as always thanks ever so much for watching please note the music made for this video was composed and created by myself based on a tune called swinging safari um which is really quite cool by uh, Bert Camp for, for thingy. But yeah, really cool. <laughs> I like it. It's just upbeat and fun. As always, please make sure you give us a good old thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.